welcome back to my channel. This is Susie from Thread Quarters. A very happy new year to you. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's period. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own bees wax wraps. So if you're interested in finding out more, then keep watching. Right, before I get started, I'm just going to say very quickly that um, I have been gifted a watch by Holzkern and they've asked me to um, wear it in one of my videos and offer you a discount code if you might like to pick one up for yourself. So if you want to hear more about the watches, then um, at the end of the video I'll chat through about that. But let's get on to the wraps. Um, to kick off the new year, I am starting a new series um, focusing on using your dressmaking scraps to reduce your wastage of single-use items in your home. Catchy title, that! <laughs> but yeah, it's something I have been really thinking about recently and I wanted to share my, uh, not new ideas, but just things that I've found online that I am going to be putting into place personally in my home and I thought you might be interested in it too. So this is the first uh, video of the series and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own um, beeswax wraps. So I use, have been using cling film and tin foil to wrap up my leftovers in the fridge or for um, putting my um, sandwiches in for taking for lunch or putting it in a little plastic bag and you can only use those a couple of times really before you're going to have to throw it out and I'm trying to reduce the amount of plastic that I use in my household in my life um, and I discovered beeswax wraps. Essentially beeswax wraps are um, fabric that's been coated in beeswax beeswax is naturally antibacterial as well which is just fantastic and it's super easy to wrap up your your um, food and your leftovers I've got an apple in here and just the heat from your hand ever so slightly melts the wax and um, fo forms itself a seal around your food and then you can pop that in the fridge or in your bag and take it with you for the day and once you've finished with uh, your, you've eaten it, <laughs> and say maybe there's a little bit of dirt, all you've got to do is run that under the tap and um, give it a little wipe and it's good to use again. Um, I even find that under a, a ever so slightly warm tap, they do say don't run it under hot water because that melts the wax, but slightly warm sort of gets rid of the creases and it looks like new again. And you can reuse these over and over and over again. And if they start to get a little bit um, too, crisp, uh, too worn looking or whatever, you can pop them back in the oven and um, heat, it, heat the wax up and they'll look brand new again. And I would say that these would last probably about a year um, before you need to maybe recoat them again or perhaps just make some new ones. I haven't used mine for a full year yet so I can't give you that um, um, advice for definite. That's just what I've read. So my focus is on reusing our dressmaking scraps and um, traditionally they do say to use um, like a cotton um, a lightweight cotton, not even quilting cotton, that is actually a little bit too heavy. You can use it but it doesn't work as well as for example this is made out of a cotton lawn and it's lovely. It's just the right thickness to make these wraps because once you put the wax on it it does get a little bit thicker. I did do a little bit of testing for you so I could see what other um, fabrics you could use. Um, I tried linen, it was far too hard. These are my samples. Yeah, so I tried a linen piece. I was just doing a test, so it's a bit of a funny shape, but it's just a little bit too hard. I can still use it, but it's not as good. Also, I thought double gauze would be fantastic. See, I've got a little one here. It's really, really solid. <laughs> so I don't recommend using your double gauze 
um, which is a shame, but there you go. One fabric I found to work really well, actually probably the best, was um, viscose or rayon. It is really, really malleable after you put the wax on it. That's what I made this um, little pouch out of. So um, it, that is just dependent on um, how you feel about using viscose or rayon to um, wrap your um, food in. Personally, I think it's fine. Um, it's still quite natural. Plus you've got your beeswax coating on top of your fabric. Right, right. so what you're going to need is some of your scrap fabric, pinking shears to just cut the shapes out, maybe um, a circle template, like a plate. You'll need a baking sheet, some tin foil, beeswax, which you can either buy in a solid um, bar and then just chip bits off, or I have pellets. Um, either Either's gonna work fine. Um, for information, my bag was uh, 200 grams of pellets and I've made about 10 wraps from that. You'll also need um, string and clothes pegs as well, which you'll see why shortly. Okay, so let's get into the method. So you're just going to be grabbing your scrap piece of fabric. I have some viscose or rayon here and grab your pinking shears. Now you don't have to use pinking shears to um, cut your fabric but I do find that it makes a much nicer finish to your edges. Um, and for this particular sample I am um, just cutting a large rectangle and um, this will be great for um, wrapping up your sandwiches or something larger like that. So just moving that one out of the way, um, here are some that I've already uh, cut out in different sizes and shapes. Um, this lovely green spot you might recognise I made a um, skirt out of this in the summer and this is a really really lightweight cotton lawn and it will be just absolutely perfect for um, making wraps out of. This small circle I used a uh, side plate and this larger size circle I used um, a normal dinner plate and both circles would be great for putting around dis different size bowls over the top of different size bowls say if you have leftovers or something like that you want to cover. Then I've made um, a few squares and larger rectangles which um, again as I said will be good for wrapping up sandwiches. And then this fabric here is actually um, an old pillowcase I had in my stash. It's fabric from Ikea. It's a little bit heavier than the lawn, but I still think it'll be fine for the job. Um, now what I will say is that this fabric has um, got a white background and um, you'll see that the wax does colour your fabric a bit so the white will end up a little bit yellow but still looking beautiful and totally fit for purpose of course. So again I just made some small circles out of this, some more large circles and then some of the larger rectangular pieces as well. So that's um, everything I've got prepped and now let's head on over to the kitchen. Okay, welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm just going to show you the little setup that I've got. So I've got my oven on under here. Um, you want to just stick it on to about 200, 180 um, centigrade and um, get that ready. And then I've got this bit of string. You're probably wondering what's going on. Um, just whatever works for you, but you're going to need to create some sort of uh, washing line <laughs> essentially to let your um, wraps drip dry over your tray once you've um, dipped them in the wax. Literally doesn't take very long but you still need somewhere to do it. Um, so, and then a couple of little clips here or pegs will be attached. This is my extractor fan that I've just sellotaped this um, 
bit of string to it's over my hob. And then zooming in a little closer, um, just a normal baking sheet. And because I've done this before, I have some tinfoil left over. You don't necessarily need to line your baking sheet, um, but I did just to be on the safe side in case the wax stuck to it, but you can get it off. And this is a um, tinfoil that I have used previously, so I just kept it because it's still got a little bit of the wax in it. And um, when I stick this back in the oven, it's going to melt again and I can use that little bit of wax that I didn't use for my um, first time doing this. So, mold it into position. doesn't need to be perfect. And then I've got my beeswax. So you don't need too much of the wax and just sprinkle it on. Once it melts, it'll be super runny and you, and you can spread it out over the whole of the, the sheet. I'm gonna be doing quite a lot today, so I might put in a fair amount. If you're only doing one or two um, wraps, you won't need as much of this. And then we just pop this into the oven. So once your wax is melted and you've taken the tray out of the oven, um, just take your first piece and drop it into the wax. Just be really careful to not touch the hot wax. Just ever so slightly with the tips of your fingers might be okay, but obviously it's gonna be very hot, so do be careful. Um, and then once it's completely coated, grab a clothes peg and take it out. Trickiest part is it sticking to itself. So again, you're gonna to have to just prise it apart a little bit and um, hang it up on your little washing line that you've set up. And you can see the wax is dripping off and onto the tray below it. Make sure you keep the tray below it. That's why you have to have the setup um, of the washing line above wherever you're um, making your wax uh, wraps. So it only needs to hang here for maybe a minute. Um, Two minutes maybe just touch it a little bit here to see if it's dry and um, it doesn't have to be 100% dry when you take it off as you see I was just testing it there and I, it's totally fine it's not going to be dripping anymore take it off just straighten up the edges a little bit because they get a little bit creased from the pegs and then that's it you set it to the side let it cool completely and I checked this wax and it has now cooled down a bit, so I'm gonna pop it back in the oven to melt again. And back out again, using oven gloves, of course, um, onto another piece, drop it in, and make sure it's completely coated. I use a clothes peg here to sort of push it down a little bit rather than my fingertips. And uh, there's a little bit, needs to get coated again and hang it up, and that's as easy as, as it is. And there you go. We've got our ready-made wraps all done. And now I'm gonna show you some ways of utilizing them. So first of all, I just wanted to show you a really cute idea of taking maybe even just three of your wraps. I've got a small circle, large circle, and a rectangle here. Tied it with a bow, and it makes the cutest little gift. Next up, say you have some leftovers in a bowl. You can take one of the circle wraps and just very gently press down, and with the heat of your hands, you will mold the wrap around the bowl and it'll stick to itself and stay on the bowl and keep your leftovers safe.
and for example any produce that you want to keep safe obviously this apple doesn't need to be wrapped up but I'm just using it as an example just mold one of your wraps around it fold it up in the edges and again it's all about the heat from your hands that's me sort of holding on to it getting the heat to mold the wax around your produce. Say you had half an avocado or maybe half a lemon that you wanted to keep safe in the fridge, then there you go. That's it all wrapped up and molded. Any Anything like that will work well with it. And finally, um, here's a suggestion for how to uh, wrap up your sandwiches for lunch. Um, it's a bit easier than trying to mold it around soft sandwiches, so I'm creating a bit of a pouch. So I'm folding it not perfectly in half, and then folding the edges over twice. Again, that's me pressing down with my hands to create a little bit of heat. Fold it over once, press a bit of heat. Over again, press it again. Um, and then you'll see I don't have a sandwich as my sample. <laughs> Um, instead, I'm going to be using a book just for this example, but imagine it's a sandwich. And slot it in, and then you can fold up the top. Fold it over once, press it, a little bit of heat, and then fold it over again just for a bit more security. Again, that's just me pressing down, getting a bit of heat, securing it in place, and there you go. There's your little pack lunch ready to be popped into your lunch bag or briefcase or handbag for the day and um, then take it out and enjoy it whenever you like. So it just creates a nice little pouch. You could also do this with and put like nuts in there or raisins or whatever snack you want to bring with you and it's a great way of using the wraps. So there you go, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're interested in what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a gable top <laughs> from Jennifer Lauren Handmade. The fabric was from Soisfaction, so I'm afraid it's um, long sold out, unfortunately. And I've been wearing my watch from Holzkern. So Holzkern is a young startup company in Austria, um, and they work in partnership with experienced watchmakers, transforming raw natural materials into unique timepieces. And they're very big on their um, fairness and sustainability, which I thought um, worked well with this particular video um, topic. So um, one euro for every um, watch sold is donated in reforestation projects in Nicaragua or towards the employment of people with reduced physical, sensory and mental capabilities. I just think that's fantastic that they are um, donating towards those causes. I think it's very important. Um, all the watches are made with elements of wood and natural stone and I just think they are really quite beautiful and I couldn't resist saying yes when they offered to gift me one of their watches. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, what they've also offered is 10% um, off to you guys if you would like to purchase uh, one, a watch for yourself. Um, I will put all the details down in the description box below, so if it's something you would be interested in finding out more about, then check down below there. The um, code is here if you would like to pick one up for yourself. So thanks so much for watching guys, um, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I have um, a few more uh, ways of using up your scraps coming in future videos. I'll probably space them out a little bit, um, but um, I really hope I've inspired you a little bit and um, you might all start thinking about ways of reducing one-time usage products in your home and also using your fabric scraps. So until next time, bye guys.